Okay, we got a, a very simple example using Spring Boot with Rabbit MQ here. And what I have is a, a simple application, it's a web application. We're going to back it up with MySQL so you can uh, see the examples running. I'm actually running in the background here, I am running MySQL in a Docker container also running RabbitMQ in a Docker container. If you're not familiar with Docker, I do have a whole course on Docker, so definitely worth checking out. But you don't need to be running that in a container, you just need to have those services available on localhost. And for MySQL, the, by default, it's gonna be looking for a Spring Boot schema, or a schema sp specifically to this, the database schema of Spring Boot underscore RabbitMQ example see here on the screen this is a, a prerequisite to run this and then you're also going to need to have RabbitMQ running on localhost at port 5671. Now of course the source code for this example is available up on github in my little area of github and you can go to github slash spring framework guru and this repository is slash spring dash boot dash RabbitMQ dash example. So scroll down here in the readme a little bit more. The application flow. So what we're going to see here in the application, we'll bring up a web application, pretty simple application. I actually have other examples of this out there, CRUD style application for a product. We can create a product and on that I've added a link to increment a message and what that link is going to do is hit a, a controller action, send a message to the queue and then Rabbit will pick up that message and update the database for us. So I am going to toggle over to IntelliJ and we'll step through the source code example. Now, first thing I got up here is the, the Spring Boot Palm and we can see that I am using, at the time of recording, the latest release of Spring Boot, that is 1.5.2. You can see that up on line 17 there. Now the dependencies that we need to bring on, the big one for RabbitMQ is going to be right there on line 28 to 31, the dependency for Spring Boot Starter AMQP. Now that dependency is a curated dependency from the Spring guys, which will bring in everything that we need to talk to RabbitMQ. Now the next thing down on 33 to 36 is the MySQL connector. So that is going to give us the drivers that we need to talk to the MySQL database. And then finally on 38 to 41, I am bringing in the uh, Spring Boot or the Spring Boot Starter for uh, Spring Data JPA. And that's what going to bring in both Spring Data JPA and Hibernate, which is a dependency of the Spring Data JPA. So we're, we're using uh, Hibernate and Spring Data for all our persistence operations. And then 43 there, 43 to 46, we're bringing in the starter for time leaf. Then below that, 48 to 50, we are bringing in the Spring Boot starter for web. And then finally, test. And I am being a bad developer here. I don't really have any tests written for this. So let's uh, take a, we'll step through this flow wise. I am not focused on the MySQL persistence layer here. So I'm not going to cover that. I do cover that in other videos. So if you need uh, some help with persistence, go ahead and check those out. But here I'm focused on the message flow. So what we are going to do is on the show page, we are going to provide a link to click on. And on that link, we'll click on. And that, that link is going to render by the product ID. So this here sets up a link using a time leaf tag, which we'll be able to click on. If you're not familiar with time leaf, I have a whole course on time leaf. So. I uh, can really deep dive on that if you want. But here we'll get a, a link to click. That will go to our product controller. And we have this index product slash ID. So that's what's going to get executed by that link. And I've set up the product service, kind of a standard template. I try to keep all business logic out of the controller. So we'll do all the heavy lifting, quote unquote, heavy lifting inside of the uh, product service and we can see that I'll just click through this this is implemented in an interface and I can click right here to the implementation now what this does is it takes in the ID get a, a simple map that we're going to put on the, the queue we get ID ID 
So right there in line 75, we're just mapping to a string of ID and the ID value that was passed in from the controller, so whatever that is. Doing a little log statement there so that we can see it. And then we are using the rabbit template, convert and send. And if you're familiar with the JMS stuff for Spring, just like JMS template, but rabbit template. And we're gonna shoot it down to a queue and that action map. So next thing that's going to come into play is our product message listener. This is set up to listen on that queue. And what he's going to do is we're gonna log a message. We're gonna see that on line 32, we're converting that string to a long because it's what how we're storing the ID in the database. We are gonna fetch that. We have a Boolean value on the product to see if a message has been received. So we'll flip that to true. And then we will increment the message count by one. So every time we get a message, we'll set it true, implement by one. So we can see that go up. And then finally on 37, we are going to save that message. So that's kind of how everything flows through the system. we got a couple minor configuration things to look at. So we are doing that in the Spring Boot application class. Now, this main class for Spring Boot is also treated as a configuration class for Spring, so we can wire up beans in that. And now one thing that we uh, want to do is set up a public final static string for our message queue because we need to use that value in several places. You saw me using that in the, in the service that consumes and produces the messages. So we, we don't want to repeat ourselves, just a good programming how you don't repeat yourself. If this was a larger enterprise class application, I'd probably make that property externalized. So we're not hard coding it here, but this is just an example. So on line 18, we do have a hard coded Q value. So if this is a larger enterprise type application, you'd probably want to externalize that to a property so you could change that without doing a, a code change, should you need to. So on line 20, 21 there, we are creating a queue using the queue name that we uh, defined on 18. We'll create a topic, and then we are creating a, a binding a binding builder there. So this is all the, the rabbit MQ type stuff. And the next thing, so this sets up kind of the plumbing in and out of rabbit. We want to set up a listener container. So what we are going to do is set up a listener adapter and this type of style for RabbitMQ, it can accept any POJO that will take in the value coming in off that queue. So this is our product message listener, which I just showed you here. So this is what's going to receive it. And you can see that it has a receive message and we are setting this up as a spring component. So this is gonna be a spring bean. It'll get configured by spring and product repository will get auto-wired in for us. So all this will get set up by spring. So we are saying is this bean is going to take in an instance of that. So a spring managed bean is going to get injected into this. And we are creating a an adapter, kind of a wrapper around the simple POJO that's going to do whatever we need it to do. And then we're telling it the default listener method. So we, we are specifying that. So we have a, a custom bean. So this kind of a, decouples that, that implementation from FIDMQ. So. I'm going to start this up and run it now. And again, while this is starting, as a reminder, you do need to have RabbitMQ running as well as MySQL. And we can see down here that this has started. You can see that's all up. I'm just going to move that up and let's come on over to Chrome. And I want to pull this up so we can see log messages going across. So. Down the bottom of the screen, I have the Spring Boot Console outputting. So I'm going to hit a refresh there. We can see that it came back with a list of products. I don't have any products. So I am going to go ahead and create a new product. Test product. We'll give them a price of 23. Some URL. I don't have any brains on this, so I'm not validating for a valid URL. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Now we can see that I am logging the SQL for Hibernate, and we can see that that activity has occurred down there on the bottom of the screen where we did go ahead and insert a new product ID, and I can refresh this. 
Now here's my action, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and we see that it came back right away. Now what's going on here is some message is sent false, zero. So what happened is this came in, came into the controller method. We sent the message to RabbitMQ, and the browser returned right away, but that message was off on the RabbitMQ gone down asynchronous to the message broker we had a, a, a different thread listening on that and he got picked up so when I we can see that um, we did get an update here of the product so let's go ahead and refresh this now we can see that message is sent is true and we have a message count that has been incremented so if I click on this again we can see that the, the messages are getting processed almost right away and as I increment this it's always going to be like a step behind. It's almost a race to see who, who gets finished first if the web request can do that. Sometimes it actually wins, but typically you're going to get the old value returned and that update is going to occur after the page renders. So it does happen pretty pretty darn fast. Sometimes it is a race and it does catch up. But So we, now we can see that we've gone through end to end. We are sending a message for that product ID and that specific product ID is getting updated by a message listener after the message has gone across the rails of RabbitMQ. And again, if you want the complete source code for this example, I do have it up on GitHub at Spring Frameworks Guru slash Spring Boot dash RabbitMQ dash example. So hope this helps you.